Uh, so hi everyone, I was really surprised when I first saw this graph. Um, first of all, I didn't even understand the numbers. So I was looking at these side numbers and you might think millions. Uh, okay, so if this was millions, it would be $8 million. So the size of BlackRock Investments, $8 million. Right, so, but actually it's not millions. And then I thought about it, is it billions? Um, it's actually trillions. So uh, they don't make this obvious on the Wikipedia page. Um, it's kind of funny because if you look at this page, um, this is oops, a f list of asset management firms. So there's this uh, new term that I became familiar with, AUM, and that's assets under management. And uh, basically, I graph that. So uh, if you look at the graph, uh, you can, and I kind of added this relative to the whole uh, economy. So just as a quick little number, uh, there is approximately uh, $90 trillion worth of assets in the global stock market. So that number is not very precise, 90 trillion plus or minus maybe even 10 trillion, right? Um, so it has one sniffing digit in it. <clears throat> now, if you look at this, you can kind of see precisely how the rest of the earth, Earth's stock market is. And then these companies, which are primarily American companies, interestingly. So the sum of these, uh, some of that is about $28 trillion. So that number is unbelievable when you consider the size of the U.S., stock market so i'm not sure if this is true but uh they say that the size of the u.s stock market is 37 trillion so or, or 34 trillion so let me just graph that i'm gonna stop this and okay so we're back um so if you take this just for the united states stock market this is the percentage of everyone else that's left so when you think about it um, people might invest directly in iShares or directly in uh, one of these uh, ETFs or something. So a lot of that goes through these companies, BlackRock, Vanguard, and Fidelity. So this is assets under management. Um, and basically, you can kind of see how this works. So this is everyone else. So the, the part that's kind of confusing to me personally is just thinking about this. So like, okay, I don't really own any of these. Um uh, and I want to just have a disclaimer, I may or may not have uh, at the past, but right now I can't think of anything that I am owning. Um, but uh, these, so this is basically would be like perhaps uh, just the rest of the stock market, right? So uh, it shows, you know, about 17%. So that's a surprisingly little amount. And it might even be less than this when you consider maybe even as much as this percentage is perhaps even under other management types of companies. So that means there's only a small sliver of stocks that are actually traded, for example, by someone else other than these guys. And for that matter, I wonder, you know, what the size of these companies are and some other details. So I'm gonna try to deal, dive into as many details as possible for this. Um, and uh, basically what I did here is grabbed a bunch of these companies and just kind of looked at them. So um, I we're kind of depending on this source here, which it shows it doesn't really show. But this is also very interesting. Uh, I was just thinking about some buddies in Africa and some other parts of the world. Might be interesting to see uh, who the investment companies are. Um, and uh, they have a list here. Maybe you could find a few of them in your particular area. Um, but as far as the largest in the world, and this says as of 2020. So this number is a little bit hard to get. Um, I think it may be possible to um, kind of like add up Yahoo data and come up with your own calculation. I would, I'm actually in the process of working on something like that. But And here is a list of investment banks. So doesn't really list, you know, here it just shows uh, one, two, three, doesn't say anything about the uh, value. And that's because it's maybe just hard to know. And then these are financial conglomerates. So the main reason I was interested in is just kind of looking at uh, what's going on with these ETFs. So I put these here. So here is BlackRock. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of homework here in the background here and then show you a couple things, um, including uh, where their headquarters is located. Looks like in Manhattan.
Okay, so if you look at these details here, I kind of graphed them. And uh, I am pretty interested in kind of in the number of employees that they're hiring um, because that's important. Do they actually, are they actually building some value for the community? So uh, these numbers seem very low like, compared to uh, most larger companies. Um, but uh, in general, uh, what's going on here is this is their assets under management. So this is in trillions. So they actually started in 2010. It doesn't really even give the data here before that. So clearly um, it didn't start that way. And you can see that their profit, <coughs> um, so if you look at the total assets, somewhere around 2005 was kind of, you can see the revenue here being in the millions. So this would be kind of the first billion and then two billion, four or five and so on. So if you look at that, that revenue line is the blue line here. So, and you can see the net income, obviously this is their profit um, after expenses and everything. So this is the revenue. Um, and that's actually pretty close, these two, I would say. Um, and then total assets. <coughs> you see that um, clearly they've benefited a lot from having uh, some assets of their own and not just managing other people's money. Um, but this number up here is in the trillions. So this right here is trillion, right? And then above here would be the next 10 trillion. Um, they're not in that level yet, but uh, certainly getting to that point. Um, so it's just interesting to see this over time. Uh, I'm trying to think about anything else that would be interesting here to look at. So uh, price per share. I'm not even sure if that's relevant. There's a lot of different shares that they have. So on their web page, I noticed something interesting here. And it basically says a little bit about their history here. Um, but if you read down in here, their biggest division is this iShares division. And <clears throat> that is basically from, like if you look at the largest ETFs in the world, um, the largest couple ones um, are basically there. So <clears throat> a lot of people are putting their money into these ETFs here. So I just wanted to look at that in detail. Uh, so just a couple more details here. So there's this detail, there's about 800 exchange traded funds that they have, which is an unbelievable number. Um, and down in here, um, one of the biggest recent financial catastrophes was in 2008 and you see here in 2009 so they essentially took on the debt of bear stearns aig freddie mac and morgan stanley um so that to me is kind of a warning sign i noticed that <clears throat> in their key people one of their guys was from a former one of these companies that uh foreclosed so they're very big and in some ways maybe just so big that uh, it sounds pretty scary to me. So, um, and uh, But uh, basically what I want to do is go here and look at their iShares um, details. Um, but uh, um, So one last detail before we go into the iShares. So this right here shows, at least suggests that uh, BlackRock owns about 6% of Apple and about almost 7% of Microsoft and also Wells Fargo, JP Morgan Chase and others. So I don't know if these numbers are exact up to date. You can check uh, what those percentages are. Um, if you look at the Yahoo pages, uh, they can show you. I can maybe show you how to do that. Okay, so hi everyone. So I'm just gonna close this up with back BlackRock investments and kind of looking at their headquarters here. Uh, in Manhattan, and if you're not familiar with Planet Earth, uh, here we are on Planet Earth. Um, so basically, uh, that's New York City here, and uh, you can kind of just see. Uh, so, you know, obviously, BlackRock primarily is a ginormous company, right? So I actually had quite a bit of trouble trying to find their headquarters, and that's not a good sign. Um, so I went to this thing and uh, searched for BlackRock. And the funny thing is they say Inc. here, BlackRock Inc. And when I do a search for uh, BlackRock, BlackRock, they have this uh, other BlackRock financial group. I think it's kind of funny. So it's probably this address on 55th Street. So we're just going to uh, grab that address. So uh, BlackRock, here we are zooming in. So that building right there is, is BlackRock, um, I believe. This other one is not part of BlackRock. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just grab the address here, copy it, and uh, p 
paste it hopefully into uh, the computer lets me find out this so here we are blackrock so uh if you're not familiar with manhattan uh i used to live over here in brooklyn uh kind of off the l line um williamsburg kind of area but a little bit further out from there but this is basically manhattan this whole island is kind of a strange little island um certainly feels a lot more like an island than you might guess uh if you get on there but actually with this it's like looks like it's all part of the bronx but uh black rock so so the interesting thing is that you know, most of uh, the financial community is actually here in the south part of Manhattan. Um, certainly, BlackRock has some, many trillions of dollars under investment and billions of dollars upon billions of dollars, so they could probably have multiple offices here in New York. But it says they have 16,000 employees on YouTube, or excuse me, on uh, Yahoo yeah, Finance. Um, but you know this this says a lot so you need to think about what's going on here so this is kind of like upper manhattan it's not really so like times square is like 42nd street this is up on 52nd street so 10 blocks so you're just basically talking most of the really really busyness and it's kind of becomes a little bit more of its own private investment community up here this is quieter a uh, nicer place to meet sometimes um certainly uh the tip of Manhattan, which I'm not as familiar with, um, it, it, it is kind of nice to be on the tip of Manhattan, but it's hard to have, like, if you want to just walk to work or if you live in the area, there's a lot more residential houses here. It, the tip of Manhattan is just a lot of office buildings, and it's just, that's one of the reasons I think why. It's just, if you want to walk to work, you kind of have to be here. And also, the United Nations is over here. So this, this building here is the United Nations, so fairly close to the United Nations. I would say you have to be like within this region really to say you're super close to the United Nations or even on Rose. Eh, it's, you know, whatever. This is close. Um, and uh, kind of see Broadway running up here. I'm going to do this on the view here so you can kind of start to see some of these buildings. This, you know, Manhattan has just changed a lot. It's really, I talked to the friend of mine that still is there. Some of these buildings are just brand new and just actually horrifying. They're so thin and just... They look like little nails in some kind of a coffin or something. But certainly uh, it is nice to be close to Central Park, and that would be one of the luxuries here of uh, working at Black Rock. You kind of see some of the names of the towns here. Um, and uh, some uh, funny names here like Hell's Kitchen and Theater District. And this is Midtown. So Midtown, Midtown which you should know about if you're thinking about Black Rock, this little park is kind of like an after work place, but honestly, Black Rock, this location, it is, it's pretty quiet and uh, kind of a different part of Manhattan. Um, certainly, certainly uh, each area changes, you know, like this whole being close to the United Nations has its own feel, particularly just kind of in these few blocks in here. Um, but uh, you can see Midtown here. I'm going to just kind of circle around so you can see. And this little dot here is Black Rock, so you can see Midtown here. This little park is a really nice little park here. Um, I just remember I personally met some great friends here. and So it's it's kind of, you know, I mean, the problem with Central Park is it's so big, it's it just feels a little polluted sometimes. There's just so, like, it kind of feels like a homeless park, to be honest, sometimes. Uh, so it's really nice to have, but at the same time, it's, uh, I don't know, it's something seems a little bit strange about it. Um, but, uh, 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 but certainly being closer to the water is interesting here and you can kind of see other things. So, and I'm just going to go back and we're going to kind of walk down here to the, uh, the main financial district. Let's just find, uh, wall street. Uh, so if you do a search on the internet for address of wall street, you can just grab this 11 wall street and we'll go back here and just look at wall street um so wall street's really strange i'm not that familiar with wall street either but uh but you can kind of see here let's just do new york new york and uh that's the address here so now it's been a while since i've been over here but i remember it being very close to the tip so that's 
basically what we're looking at here at Wall Street. And it's actually surprisingly uh, nice here. Um, it was just, it's, it's, it's got a different kind of quietness than where BlackRock is. This quiet feels like it. It just feels older, quiet, like 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 prestige of hundreds of years. There's a very interesting church too, um, kind of just north. And, and I want to do a street view here in a second. Um, I should have probably done it of uh, Blackrock first, but it's just a really kind of. It, it is its own little street, and man, this looks like it's changed a lot. There's there's a certain building in here, so you gotta. Ah, here's the church. So actually this little church is, it's kind of like a sacred church, man. It feels really strange. You're just like, um, it needs to change. It feels like it's, it's, it's not a lot of money has been put into that church, but it's, it's kind of didn't kept the way it is for a while. Um, you, there's a lot of churches that are super, super big. It's not one of these super, super big churches and I think it's just because it feels so crowded there and I'd love to hear the story anyway but this is supposed to be about BlackRock but uh but anyway let's go back to BlackRock's address and uh, uh look at the street view on that one uh so we're just gonna kind of like fly in here into uh, BlackRock HQ and see what's going on so in general there's a very interesting little island here we're gonna kind of look in from the United Nations perspective this little dot right there is the United Nations so uh, if you were to head over from the United Nations, or usually you'd probably, wouldn't, I don't know if you'd be going to the, from the United Nations, but maybe they'd go the other way. But uh, but you can see kind of Midtown here, Manhattan, and that kind of being the focus, really. Um, but you can see in modern years that the, the shape of the city is kind of changing. This Hall's Kitchen has just never really been... Um, and you can see this building right here is BlackRock, right? So we're gonna kinda, now there's a bunch of other buildings. I'm kinda familiar with this, there's Citigroup's building right here. So that, I believe it's one of these guys, but uh, but BlackRock kinda being a uh, different shape of a building here. You can kinda see uh, kind of a pyramid structure, I'm trying to do a pyramid scheme. Um, and, uh, but yeah, that's kind of the building. So what I wanted to do is get a street view right on that street. And this right here. So if we click on this, we might be able to just drag it right to the front and see. So here we are on 52nd Street. So address is 55 East 52nd Street. So interesting. Let me see Fidelity's... Uh, signage out here and let's see if we can even get the address might be able to get the address here so so actually it says 55 east 52nd street so i think we're going the wrong direction so it's actually the front entrance is on 52nd street so this so the way this works is that these streets going this way are the uh, 52nd and then next block would be 53rd so if we just go up a little bit here we can start to see there's a couple other banks here, Chase, and a big building there. Let's see if we can look up and see this BlackRock building. So that, I'm not even sure if that's BlackRock. So this looks like the BlackRock building, right? So actually, that looks like the entrance right there. So uh, interestingly, okay, so this might be the entrance. Uh-huh, so we see the entrance here, 55 east so uh not really on the main street right and then you see maybe even across the street another building that uh remember these guys have a lot of money so they might even own the whole entire building i wouldn't even be surprised so let's just look up to this goliath oh my gosh um and uh you know what's interesting is that this building is so ugly but from a friendly standpoint there's other buildings in the area you can see uh, a lot of these like black cars pulling around and actually maybe even the nicer building would be this uh, smaller building next to it um and uh yeah so we'll just pull up a little bit here and you can kind of see what the building looks like uh but uh you know they 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 probably have a different uh division here maybe right across the street so 
maybe some Black Rock employees even crossing the streets right now. So, uh, open to the public. Look at this sign. So, uh, but anyway, uh, you know, you can see they probably uh, have a little Starbucks coffee there and some other things. I want to just, we're going to do a full walk around. Oh, geez, that was far. So, maybe I went a little bit too far on that. But let's look up again. That's still the building, I think. So, it's kind of this whole block, right? So, we kind of got um, this block here. Now, we're one block over. Now, these are avenues going this way. So, if we go up here, we're kind of going up the avenue. Now, we should be heading towards 53rd Street. And uh, here you got some more um, kind of a separate building. This is a lot more typical style, this, this type of rock. I actually like that rock better than these new buildings um, and uh, just some other buildings in the area. So we're going to try to go. I don't know if we're going to make it all the way around, but I'll try my best, guys. And, uh, oof, gosh. So uh, just some more downtown Manhattan actually looks a little bit uh you know we're getting towards central park here so up in there that might even be part of central park and then now we're on the other side of black rock so i want to just cruise down here and i think we even made it back to the other side of the street so basically uh that's a full tour of the black rock headquarters um and you see this street right here park avenue that is the street so just realizing for my time is that Park Avenue is kind of like the street in terms of uh, um, there's a lot of investment companies that have liked over the years but in my personal opinion man it's nice but there's a lot of nice areas in Manhattan and it's kind of cliche being here you can see that there's a couple interesting places back in this way I remember but honestly um, gets to be pretty corporate in this area and kind of boring um but it's its own lifestyle so um but you can kind of see we'll just go a little bit further down this road um but yeah so i i you know and 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 probably these chase facilities and fidelity i mean this if you're kind of and this particular building was super fancy and nice this is actually a very nice little church um it's extremely exclusive church, um, but uh, very interesting. Um, and, you know, if you were working in this area, maybe have a meeting somewhere else. And to be honest, uh, Chase looks a little bit nicer here. Um, and Fidelity looks like, man, I don't, I don't even know why they're doing this here. Um, just maybe to meet with these other groups. So I think what's going on here in Manhattan, unfortunately, is a lot of people are just kind of kung kung I'm reading the same few blocks here and there is a lot of wealth right in here. So um, I remember my friend kind of giving me the lecture, this is Manhattan's wealth and blah, blah, blah. But honestly, I don't believe it. I think it's better to be down towards Wall Street. Um, but uh, it's just kind of a little bit, it feels nicer. You get fresher breeze off the, coming off the water and stuff. And this is kind of getting into more of central Manhattan. But uh We'll exit the street view. I hope that's been interesting to see. Um, and we'll just zoom out here. So, again, that's the Black Rock building. And uh, we'll just go all the way out to outer space here. So, kind of see uh, this little island and some other things. So, why they chose this, perhaps, is because of Park Avenue. So, that's Park Avenue. And it's really just in this few blocks here. Um, but, honestly, there's a lot of new stuff going on. Um just in this area, you know, it's 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 just nicer to be part of where the community is. This just I don't know, something feels a little strange there, but uh but maybe big money sees other kinds of big money and there's maybe this is a lot of money from the nineteen nineties and two thousand. And I think uh things have changed a little bit. But uh but in general, you know, there's a lot of really fun little bridges coming in here to downtown Manhattan. Here it's the train system, you kinda depend on a different train system. And I think I uh, might be able to get transportation in on this. Um, I will see if I can get that. So uh, you can kind of see how the, the public transportation works. And uh, this unfortunately doesn't show the, uh, I wish it showed the rail maps, but 
Uh, maybe it does. So there's probably rail maps in here, but it just doesn't look very nice. Uh, but uh, in general, I hope you've enjoyed this study of uh, primarily BlackRock, but uh, kind of see uh, just an overall view. There's BlackRock there. And certainly, um, I'm shocked uh, with the amount of money that they deal with. So it's uh, it's just hard to uh, hard to comprehend um, exactly what this means. So, and I don't even know where my chart went. So, uh, <clears throat> in terms of uh, looking at BlackRock, this is everyone. This is the entire. This is all thirty four billion dollars, and BlackRock has about twenty percent of the entire U.S. stock market. Wow, that's just beyond my knowledge not even sure what to say about this so uh if that's fair or not or if better decisions could be made by breaking up blackrock i mean almost of course right like having all this centralized wealth in that one building or even in 10 or 20 buildings i mean when you have 20 percent of we're talking 34 billion dollars for the entire u.s stock market right and I think $30, $40 billion, that's a pretty accurate estimate, um, probably um, within plus or minus $10 billion. But this is just a, a huge, these are huge amounts. And, and I'm not trying to pick on BlackRock, and I, I really would like to look at, I'm going to look at Vanguard and Fidelity and State Street. Um, but, and, and, and honestly, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're doing a pretty good job. They have 800 or so different uh, ETFs for example, that you can invest in. Um, so that gives us a lot of opportunities. But honestly, um, we need some big changes So uh, to keep the financial industry stable. And sometimes it's easy for the government to control less organizations. But uh, at the same time, it benefits everyone to have more of a diversity of companies, right? So, but anyway, off to that spiel. So in general, for the global market, you know, if we have, a, say, $100 trillion globally, BlackRock still has a pretty big percentage. So this is not just a problem in the United States. This is globally, the United States actually has too much wealth as a percentage, right? I mean, even in these one com companies, and then you add another section just for private investment in the United States. And then the wealth of everybody else. So, and, and I don't even believe this number. So, this number just doesn't make sense. So, it would have to be, you know, maybe twice this, I would even start to believe, right? So, have, this is showing 100 billion, but maybe 200, excuse me, 200 trillion. So, this is only about 100 trillion right here. So, the, the estimate that Google says or whatever the thing could be totally wrong, right? Um, you know, the value of different countries and places around the world but uh, it is an estimate so if you're willing to uh, study trust those numbers but uh, but in general here's kind of like pie graph too and you can see the charts and stuff but let me know uh, I had fun kind of look at this um, there's just so many details that I wanted to break it up into studying hopefully Vanguard and Fidelity and these other ones as well but um, uh, let me know what ideas you have. Um, I'm really interested in uh, particularly like what companies, excuse me, what sub uh, sections of this iShares are doing well, and we can probably go into that as well. Um, but it'd be interesting to see, you know, precisely what these ETFs are doing. Um, and I kind of had a study on that too. But anyway, let me know. I uh, hope you're doing good. See you.